Until now, I've made tons of videos pointing out the toxic side of K-pop, and how they often take people, especially outsiders, aback with the extremeness it could do to idols. Yet surprisingly, it has recently turned out that the dark side of K-pop doesn't stop at mere toxicity, but also lots of uselessness, four of which you will see right in this video. Number 1. Superkind's Virtual Idol Sejin as the line between the actual and virtual worlds becomes thinner and thinner, several entertainment agencies in K-pop have now created a whole virtual idol for their group. And considering the graphic quality, it's not an exaggeration at all to say that Sejin is the most invested virtual idol ever created until now. Unfortunately, all that Sejin's got just stops with a good look when he stands still. Because when dancing, interacting with members, and even just making some expressions to portray what he is singing, he is still said to look awkward and stiff. Basically, people believe that Sejin adds nothing to the table, and probably has become one of the most useless things in K-pop, as he is said to not only have no value to Superkind, but also be a black hole sucking all controversies onto the way of the group. When Deep Studio Entertainment first introduced Sejin, they had already caused a stir on the internet because Sejin looked as if he was a mixed copy of Astro's Cha Eun Woo, NCT's Jaehyun and Do Young, TXT's Subin, and in Hypen's Jake. In his debut teaser, netizens also noticed how the camera angle, hairstyle, costumes, and even the expressions were also all try-hard knockoffs of NCT's work. From then on, things only went downhill, because instead of using Sejin as a complementary factor, Deep Studio Entertainment turned him into the center and made the rest of the group, aka real idols that had spent years in the practice room, the backup dancers for an entity that is not even real. Many also questioned what on earth Superkind's management agency was thinking when putting Sejin into the center position. Regarding his stiff expressions, the flaccid dance moves, and the cringe try-hard-to-be-cool expression. This ridiculous role assignment ticked people, and especially fans off, even more when the dance cover performances of Superkind were posted on one of the K originals. Because in the first two videos, the spotlight was on Sejin only. People felt pity for the fates of the other four members. Because despite having spent years brushing up their skills, they all ended up being the background to highlight the look and skills of a fake member. Thus, many believed Superkind could never build a solid fan base, because fans would soon leave the fandom when seeing their real idols getting treated unfairly. However, besides those who hate Sejin, there are still supporters who love this unique concept and give a lot of compliments to the creative team for creating Sejin, the most realistic virtual idol ever, as well as expressing that they felt thrilled and impressed when watching the virtual guy's dynamic dance moves and expressions. Some also sarcastically criticize Sejin's opponents, wondering why people were throwing hate on Sejin when he doesn't even exist. Number 2. Covering idols' faces and fan meanings when time's up As if the curse that Hybe could never ever create a girl group in peace is true, the company has been embroiled in countless controversies in such a short span of time. However, bad luck this time didn't come solely to their girl group, but seemingly to all groups under their umbrella as a whole. Because most recently, People have criticized Hybe for treating both in Hypen and their fans as emotionless entities to exploit money. On July 16th, not only fans but also netizens both went on big forums of K-pop to question the way B Lift Lab, a subcompany of Hybe, works, as instead of politely asking fans to leave when time's up, the staff just straight up blocked in Hypen's faces with some notebooks. According to a girl attending that fan meeting in person, she said even if the clock just ticked 0.1 seconds more, the staff would still not hold back and immediately cover the boys' faces, as if they would lose their job or their entire life in that point one second. She also pointed out how useless this policy was, and there were various reasons for it. One, to just have the chance to attend the fan meeting, fans would need to spend hundreds of dollars on tickets, so they deserve to be treated with respect. Second, in exchange for those hundreds of dollars, a fan is only allowed to meet idols in one minute sharp. And because nothing much can be said during that extremely short span of time, spending several seconds more to politely ask them to wrap up the talk didn't hurt. Apparently, B Lift Lab didn't do so. And considering how they acted, the atmosphere was dragged down terribly. Last but not least, by covering idols' faces, the company was turning fan meetings from a warm place for interactions into a mere business transaction where you get exactly what you buy. No less, no more. Thus, many believe the company is obviously objectifying idols and fans, treating them as entities with no dignity and emotions, making the impression that Nhypen had possibly joined hands into this disrespectful policy, and fans were stupid to Lulu's burning money just to be treated like trash. According to netizens, Belift Lab was ruining Nhypen themselves 
since this policy didn't make them more money, but rather made the group's image dirty. It's of course also the most useless thing they've seen in K-pop, because while Hypen was doing their best to treat fans, the company just destroyed everything for the thought that stopping several seconds at fan signs could make them richer. Number 3. DSP Sprouts Controlled Marais Fans' Time As the K-pop race is now said to be ruled by girl groups, various agencies have come up with the most exotic things to push their boy group's reputation and make more money. That's why, after the case of Hypen, Marais' company also issued the policy that fans would be charged 150,000 Korean won for the fine and prohibited from attending the next three events of the group, including those at the broadcast station and at other places, if they left Dream Rising and K-pop halfway. In the statement, DSP Sprouts even called those who would leave amid the show violators. And right off the bat, they would put the name of violators into blacklist. According to netizens, the fact that DSP Sprouts now wanted to control even fans' time to ensure the superficial image that Murray had lots of fans to support them at the event was useless and, in fact, toxic. As fans are supporters and have no legal ties with either the group or the company, treating them like slaves having to devote all their time to Murray was also said to be extremely ridiculous. The reckless action of DSP Sprouts also made netizens believe that even if fans used all their strength to protect and push the group later, Nothing could be done since this action had already made the public view them as a weak, non-famous group, managed by a thug agency. Number 4. ESPA's Individual Version Light Sticks On July 6, SM Entertainment officially released the final photos of ESPA's light stick, and to everyone's surprise, the design came out way more basic than they had imagined. Basically, because of the whopping investment poured into ESPA's concept, music, MVs, the worldview, and especially the drama that has just released two episodes, Many Mai's were really looking forward to a light stick design that is just as stunning. However, as the higher the expectation, the higher the disappointment, they were soon met with a harsh reality, as SM Entertainment launched a white light stick that couldn't get any simpler. On top of a full white handle, which could have easily been made a bit more interesting with a hint of color, a unique material, or an interesting design alternation, SM Entertainment plugged onto it a transparent white ball. As if that wasn't boring enough, they even let fans down more with another transparent piece of plastic made into the name ESPA, and underneath was a disc of colorful LED. Some said that if people don't know ESPA and look at this light stick, they would 100% think that it belongs to the first generation of K-pop, where bringing light to cheer on idols was still a feat of thought. Design ideas were rare as hen's teeth, and the manufacturing capabilities were also extremely limited. This light stick was also said to not represent ESPA well as a leading K-pop group Gen 4, whose whole concept evolves around cutting-edge technologies and the blend between virtual and actual worlds. Things didn't stop there, as SM even made each member of ESPA their own light stick version, which was a piece of plastic made into each member's logo. And according to fans, this showed nothing but an ulterior motive aiming at money, at the expense of the girls' vulnerability. Even just getting to know ESPA, certainly you can still know that Karina and Winter are the two most famous members of the group. While Ningning Ning is just as talented, and so is Giselle, their individual branching points were never seen as high as the other two girls. Looking at this alone, anyone can tell that when SM released the individual light sticks for the girls, the number of sales wouldn't go high equally, because only stands would just support their bias. What triggered fans even more about this idea is that SM Entertainment sold each piece for the girls as symbol for about $9. And eventually, while the company was there making a bunch of money, some girls would be left to munch on their self-pity as their light stick version wasn't bought that much. Some said that the situation of ESPA also made them think about how things would be if each of Blackpink's members had their own light stick. Because for ages, the group has been famous as the one with the most fragmented phantom in K-pop. People predicted that Lisa would be the most selling member, considering the number of her international fans. Thus, they could already feel the immense sadness that other members could go through in that situation. So, do you think those above things are really useless and nonsense? Which one do you find the most ridiculous? Comment down below to share your thoughts with us. Also, remember to like, share, and subscribe to Be Boss TV for more interesting K-pop content. Thank you for watching.